All right, so we're going to do a video review of, uh, we've got Thinner on the left and presently Night Vigilant Titus on the right. Uh, and this is at, was this Friendship Tournament? No, this was Unbelted last year. Unbelted Tournament, uh, Kaid 2017. All right, so let's take a quick look. Um, let's run through the first exchange at speed and see if there's anything for us to go through in slow motion. Titus leaves his feet. Okay, and we get a hold called, and the reason for the hold called is there's a suspected potential equipment failure that's not the case. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right, so let's go back, and we'll go through that first set of exchanges. Uh, and we've got Finner here, so we're probably going to focus a little bit more on Finner's technique than uh, Titus's. Mm -hmm. But if we go through in slow motion, let's get, let's get people's opinions here. So this is now slow motion. So Titus, you throw that, that first leg shot as he's coming in, and I think what happens is he's moved out of position. Yeah. Right? So shot, he, he's, he's, he's ducking. We're going backwards here. So he comes in, and I think you're throwing this what? You're throwing this onside leg shot to keep him honest as he comes in. Right? It looks like he's raised his shield. You see the opportunity. You want to keep him honest, so you throw that. That's, yeah. So you throw it, but in this case, it looks like. He's trying, it, to, he's trying to oversell a, a rising snap. I mean, it's just, that whole motion is so big, right? Um, and then when you look at, it, at people who throw really good rising snaps, it's a small motion, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a drop in your hand and your shoulder. And then, you know, this he's using his, he's, he's so faking with He's his coming head. in, he's dropping, and he's coming way up. Yeah. Right? And that, that is either because he thinks you're going to bite on a giant fake, or because it's just sort of like an impulsive impulsive thing and it looks like you recognize this this opportunity this open leg shot here but it looks to me as though uh i don't know that you necessarily recognize it late but if you recognize it earlier you would have caught him when he was rising up mm -hmm. but because you threw the shot a little later than you maybe could have he's already started then bringing the shield back down to recover go back a few seconds and watch finner's uh footwork when when he comes in, his feet are not planted enough to throw the shot when he should have thrown the shot. Oh yeah, you might be right. So so he's still shifting his feet. See, he should be throwing now. Now and his feet are still shifting. I think because the the shield's already started to rise here. Yeah. So now is probably the time to start firing. But what you're saying is that this back foot here. His feet are not planted yet. His feet will be planted in time so he can throw that shot. Watch, he's gonna get planted. Now, now he's ready to throw. I think you're right. So, he just, um, it's really about where his feet are when in relation to where Titus is coming in. Instead of waiting for Titus to be an engagement point and then throwing the shot, you're moving your feet trying to adjust to him coming in and not receiving him going into your range. You and, know what I'm saying? And you're also not throwing this shot at his leg, Right? Yeah, that is pretty high. Like that's yeah. hip level, right? So, and and so he he doesn't even have to move his shield very much, right? If you were aiming down in the you know the lower quadrant of the leg, you know, that's that's going to be a, an easier shot to to land. And if we if we leave that that line here, if we go back a little ways. You can see while well, the shield's still coming up, yeah, that spot. So this is where he's coming in. You don't know if it's available. Here you see the shield starts to rise. You could start throwing that blow now, knowing that he's going to end up there. And his shield never crosses yeah. back below that line. Now he's committed. He's going up. You can still be landing the shot. It'd be hitting. But by the time the shot eventually gets there, he's been able to drop the shield far enough to block it. So you aim a little lower, commit a little earlier, and that probably would have landed. Now, and, and Baird, you were saying that if his feet were planted, you'd probably feel more comfortable throwing that shot. That's probably the right way to go. The reason I end up out of position and off balance so much is I learned to become very comfortable throwing shots from 
bad footwork, <laughs> standing on one leg with your arm around, you know, like, wrapped around the wrong way, like, you can also throw shots when you're out of position. So, if your foot hasn't quite planted yet, if it's an onside leg shot, that's, you've got the mechanics, you've got the experience, you've got the years to be able to throw that with power with one leg in the air, probably. So, if you can't get that back heel down to plant, get your hips and rotate and get all the mechanics, maybe you can't throw it as a 10 out of 10 on power, but you could throw it as an 8 out of 10 and still yeah. land it if it's a race. Like, if you're racing to get there before you can block it. I just like the idea of having your feet planted if somebody's moving into your range because it gives you all of the you have shots. All the shot. options. And they're coming to you. Yeah, they're so you, coming to me. Yeah. So I can stay planted, and if I have to, I can step back for a block, and I still have shots. But I don't have to shuffle my feet. That's a really good I need to think about that. <laughs> That's a really good point, Sir Baird. All right, so as we continue through this, he throws this shot, and I think he's just reaching a long ways, right? Like, we're not... Well, he's getting... He's, if you notice, he... And it's also maybe there, a bit flat. It, it, that mm-hmm. one... Um, no, that looks like it's front of the blade, possibly, but it's at the very tip of the sword. It, and if... It, 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 if anything... Um, and if you look at the wrist position, you know... It's almost 180 degrees, right? Like, so he's got the sword pretty flat. So, I, I, I just don't think that's a, a particularly powerful shot. So, obviously, that misses. Now, you're fading out, and this shot that you're throwing, this leg shot, is probably to keep him honest. You know, just get him away, right? Because you're both rotating against each other, but obviously that doesn't get too close. And that's fine. So... As we continue the exchange, now this is the, the last exchange before the hold is called. I like that you're pumping the shield out to get the block, like you're being active with that shield the way you're pushing it away from your body, and you're blocking his basket hill, not the tip. So that's keeping him pretty honest, and I think you've got the arm strength to do it. But if I look at your body position, you're just a little off balance. Not much, not as bad as I get. But just a bit. And I think that's got you leaning back. <laughs> so you obviously are able to read this leg shot that he's throwing next. What do you think you're reading off of this? Are you looking at his shoulder position, his hand, or is it... It's more the shoulders. So you're, you're looking at his shoulders to see that. Okay. You're reading it really easily. Now, this, this onside shot that you throw here, what is your objective? I, I can guess, but what is it that you want to do with that onside shot? It was more just to threaten, to get him out. Yeah, get, threaten. So it's an easy, safe shot, and I like you throw it, and it doesn't put you out of position, right? Like, here you're defended. Your sword is defending this entire quadrant over here, and when you recover, it's still blocking that area, right? So... I think this is sort of like a get away, I'm still defended type attack, right? Because it does go sort of straight into his defense, but it keeps him honest. It doesn't even, you don't actually even throw it completely. Yeah. You kind of stop it. Yeah, because you know that it's going in, into a shield edge, right? All right, so here, this is where, you, here you're at D range. Here's where you step in. It. Now you're both in C range, and all the threats B open range. up. This is B range B. right there. I would say now, at least. I, I don't know. I didn't get any A's in high school, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but now you're definitely, you're definitely in, like, the danger spot. So he throws this moulinet chop sort of into your defense. And it looks like, I don't know, he's still threatening a moulinet based on his hand position, but he's backing out. Is there an opportunity, if we go back, is there an opportunity after this shot for you to hit him anywhere? Your body is turned in the, in, um, is really turned across your body. Um, but if you, you could drop, if you can get your, your shoulder and hip going, you could get a Molinet drop to his leg there. And especially because it, the way he's throwing his, his flat snap there, his, his shield is actually pulling back. So his shield's gone this way. So, Helgi, what you're saying is if you can bring the basket hilt over this way or the tip. and then bring the tip down into the leg for an offside shot, right? Mm-hmm. 
I, th- I think that that's open. The other one that I'm seeing, and it, he would probably be able to read it. The nice thing about a shield is it's pretty easy to drop. But as he backs up, to me, my impulse is to rotate for that leg in an onside shot. Oh, so like a front uh, front blade of uh, our true head? With the true edge? True edge shot, right? So uh, the arrow would, would go... For inside of the thigh. Yeah, I would cut for the inside of the thigh because this this leg is backing up and this leg is going to be planted for a minute before it can back up. Right. So I would be throwing, personally, off of this, I would rotate the basket hill this way and bring the tip around the outside of your body and down into here. Just because it's easy, it's an onside shot, you've still got good shield defense. I don't even think you need to bring your hand back. I think from right there, yeah, you, bring your, you bring your... Straight down. Just bring it the down only around. thing that is going to be in your way a little tiny bit is possibly your shield. Yeah, the, so and you can see that the shield comes back and sort of out of the way right. right here. So I would just drop that. But yeah, if this was tabled along your arm more... That would give you the, the also the traject the that angle to come in on the inside thigh too. And honestly, the the reason why my impulse is that is because when you take this block, you can see all of your motion goes into winding that shot up. Like right now, it looks to me like you're going to continue this motion with your sword because he's hit you into it. You're moving. You're getting your shield out of the way, and it looks to me like the immediate response is to throw that onside leg. But you sort of like you sort of suck it up. And then just get back into your guard. And I, he might have been able to respond, drop a shield. It's a pretty easy defense to drop your shield. Um, but I think it would have been a free shot. And even if he blocked it, I don't think there was much he could have done. So here, you're reading appropriately that he's threatening high. I also think you're wide open. I don't think he took advantage of it. But at this point, you're reading that he's stepping up and you're right. But I think if he was a really advanced fighter, he would have taken your leg. Because as he steps in, he could easily do a pump up, drop the hand, and hit you right in the leg. Because you're pushing up with both your sword and your shield as you step into range. And I, I personally, I don't know, Baird, what you would think. If I were Titus in this situation, going at 30 frames a second in slow motion, I don't even think I'd throw the wrap. I think I would just throw the onside snap to the leg. And maybe even... Not in Kaid, but in kingdoms where it's allowed to the, like the cup or the waist for the kill, because your shield's getting pretty high. Now you've read appropriately that that's not what he's going to do. Maybe his eyes were giving it away or something like that. But you've read it. Your block is appropriate for what he's doing. Against someone else, he might have tried to go and take your leg. Now in this case, it looks like the thrust is may- maybe you're trying to get a wrap off the thrust, or maybe that's just sort of the recovery. And now you guys are doing the the spin around each other, and he's going for the head wrap, which is not going to work. But if he threw that as a leg wrap instead, if he dropped his hand down, then that leg wrap or even a body wrap. Now, you would have read some of it, and again, dropping your shields really fast. Um, I'm trying to keep your... I can tell that you're trying to keep your your shield and his basket hill pretty close. So if he's going to go down, you're trying to track that basket hill to with it so as it went up your shield went up but you probably don't need to block that you don't have to go that high up but you're trying to do your hand against his hand right so playing like sticky hand go, yeah you're trying to go a little bit you go a little bit too high on the block just because you're trying to go hand to hand whereas you just have to know where the edge of your shield is that'll give you more of a block on your body and be able to um, see more yeah. as well. and i think that's sort of what you were saying about me earlier you don't need to block with both yeah, absolutely. The the other thing that I'm, um, I was seeing also in this pass is there's a, um, a hitch in your wrap, so we need to take a look at the wrap. We see it right. Okay, so there's the onside. And this one, I can tell you're reaching, but you've got a bit of an odd arm position with this onside shot. And your arm is already fully extended at this point, yeah. right? So when we talk about, um, uh, it's called the uh, conservation of angular momentum. Right, um, you ever see ice skaters um, spin and yeah. they have their arms out and they spin slow and then they tuck them in and they start ripping around, right? Um, the same thing is ha- is happens with your arm because it's out and a- and around mm-hmm. as you turn your body, it's going to be slower than if it stays in tight. You rotate and then extend right, extend out and roll at the shoulder. Um, so if this arm was in tight against your body. As you're going through this motion, 
if it, instead of the basket being out, was tight against your body, and then you extended it out, you'd sort of get a whip motion. Is that what you're saying, yeah. Sir Helgi? Yeah. Also, if you keep it close to your body, you're going to be able to hide it a little bit better, hide your shot a little bit better against his shield, because you're going to be so tucked in, his shield's going to be blinded to exactly what your throw is. When it's way out here, it's way past the shield edge. You're you can see the basket, see everything. yeah. That's what's going to happen. It's going to be easier to block. All right, so here's the hold. So let's go, and we'll go through this. Oops, sorry. That's not working either. There we go. So we'll go through this second exchange. Okay, so that's a good spot to stop if we go back. Okay, so here's you guys start that exchange. We just run through it in slow-mo. See, you guys are both reading each other's attacks really well. I haven't seen a feint from anyone yet, which might serve either of you really well. That's a nice sword block that you picked up. That... You either picked up on your sword, but it was a pretty weak offside leg, like it just didn't land with power. It was tippy and it drew through. And I think you're doing a really good job of fouling his sword with your blade, right? It's not taking a lot to mess him up. So in this case, if we go back, that offside leg, that one was sort of the same shot he threw earlier, and I think it's, it's relying on your shield position, so we're going backwards here. If we move forwards again slowly, he throws that same sort of Get your shield up, get it rocking, get it tabled. He's noticed that behavior a little bit. And then you're throwing this onside shot. It's not quite, or it's not quite getting over his shield and, edge. And again, this is, this is that wrap. Your arm is out away from your body, and then it's trying to turn over. Right? right. And you're kind of throwing it with a bent arm as well. So it's not quite getting where you want it, because it looks like here, what you're really trying to do is hit him like there but your arm's not quite getting into the right position. It's really tough mechanically to get that done, but it looks like that's what you're trying to do, and if he didn't adjust, that would have hit him. But he's throwing these things to keep your guard up. You can see your shield position is now much higher. Again, you're accurately reading what he's going to throw, right? He's not feinting you to get your leg open. But what he does here is he steps, drops that hand, and he's starting to get... Now he's got... He's realized the last one was light, I think. So if you watch what his leg is doing, he steps from here to here, drops, cocks his hip, and throws a little bit more English behind it. And now that onside or that offside leg lands with a lot more authority. Now it's still sort of pulled through, but was it enough to convince you, like, oh yeah, you got me, right? So here's where you drop. Now you've got the opportunity to maybe short stick him in the head right here. Because if you look, his shield's out of position, and if you bring your hand over, you can then drop maybe a slot shot right here as you drop. And at the very least, it makes him defend. So if you pull the hand close to the body, you pull your hand into your chest and add your body drop to it, you can kind of maybe slot him straight down the helm. And you're keeping your defense up, but notice his sword's all the way over here, so your defense isn't doing much for you there. And it's your shield that ends up blocking. Now, I would never throw a jumping sky wrap against someone I just legged. Because <laughs> they're going to be dropping. Right. Um, so his attack is not much of a threat. You've got it covered. But it, you see, if you were throwing that slot shot, you might even hit him right here. But regardless, you guys both land. And you're ready to square up. So he backs out, gives you, gives you time. And then let's see the rest of the fight here. Marshall walks in front. Marshall walks in front. We don't see anything else. Swiss dude. Oh. <laughs> yeah. We didn't see it. <laughs> no one suspects the Swiss guard. So not really sure what happened there. It was a slot, slot to the shoulder. Slot to the shoulder. Okay. So, I mean, hopefully there were a few things in there that might prove a little bit helpful. 
But I think I think the important thing is like you're definitely reading him right. Mm-hmm. You never didn't see a threat. Mm-hmm. There were the two offside legs that he threw that it looked like you didn't really respond to. Then the first one landed light. The second one was probably iffy, but you took it. Right? It looked like you put more into it, but it was still you see it got pulled through. It didn't really like pow. Um, so you're reading him correctly. You're reading the threats correctly. It's just a matter of there's a few openings available you're not necessarily exploiting, and then there's a few weird mechanics when you're trying to get deep, whether it's onside or offside, or onside or wrap, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. 